Hey, hey, math moment makers. In this episode, uh, John and I are going to be eager to dive into a discussion about a pretty heated topic Mm. in the mathematics world or community. Uh, It is all about worksheets. Are they good? Are they bad? Can they be good? Can they be bad? Uh, We're going to be talking about it all, right, John? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And worksheets, work, worksheets. I think you know, Kyle. I think they get a they get like the, this bad reputation. And mm-hmm. so I, we want to kind of clear some of the air. We want to talk about what is on or what could be on uh, worksheets that you're using in the classroom. What is on our worksheets? Are we using worksheets? Are we not using worksheets? We're going to talk about all of that in this episode. So stick around. Here we go. Welcome to the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. We are from MakeMathMoments.com and together with you, the community of math moment makers worldwide, we want to build and deliver math lessons that spark curiosity, fuel sense making, and ignite your teacher moves. Uh, Welcome, my friends, to another John and Kyle episode of the Making Math Moments That Matter podcast. We are super excited to dive into a topic that, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, a little bit heated. And actually, I'll be mm-hmm. honest and say that there's even people out there that sort of like poo-poo the idea when you say the word worksheet or handout. And uh, we want to kind of uncover that, like pull off the lid on that and really get to the bottom of it when people are looking at worksheets mm-hmm. and sort of like, you know, speaking negatively. Sometimes it's just like a tone you hear in the voice, you know, like, oh, oh, you're, oh, you're going to be using a worksheet. Sometimes people make it sound like it's a negative thing. And actually, um, we find that uh, there's a way that you can leverage worksheets in a number of different ways that are uh, highly intentional and actually really, really effective, right? Yeah, totally. And uh, I think to start this off, Kyle, we should we should kind of talk about what we mean by worksheets, because actually, when we started talking about worksheets, I think we both had different views of what we were calling uh, worksheets. I think there's many. Yeah, forms like even of them. tonight, right? Like when right. we were recording this right before, we were sort of like, "Oh, that's what you were thinking." Oh, this is what I was thinking. Right, right. right. And so we should probably talk. We'll we'll talk a little bit about that because I think there's different forms of worksheets when we talk because we, as I said, we specifically had a different idea of what we were calling a worksheet. So, Kyle, um, why don't we uh, like like why don't you start off with mm-hmm. how how you were defining a worksheet? Um, because I think we were both using that worksheet when we first started teaching. Um, yeah. And we we also wor- used the version that I was talking about as a worksheet. So so why don't you kick it off and talk about what you were calling a worksheet? And then we'll talk about what I was calling a worksheet. Yeah, like when when I hear people speaking negatively about worksheets or or you just get, like I said, that tone, there's just like this feeling um, that, you know, oh, I, I guess we're not supposed to use worksheets anymore. Like going on the internet and finding a worksheet's a bad thing. And I, I think when people are doing that, oftentimes it's like when that worksheet is like sort of the centerpiece of the math lesson, like that was kind of where my head went. And mm-hmm. like you were kind of looking at it more from like a, a practice perspective. Uh, right. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So what you were talking about, like when you were saying like, uh, my worksheets were we, we're going to hand this booklet out or or the, these pages out. You were using them as uh, oh we're go- we're going to do example one and we're going to copy it down on the the worksheet and maybe maybe Kyle you were using an overhead projector to yes. write in those notes uh, or maybe you were using your smart board uh, to mm-hmm. fill in those same same notes. Um, and so you were filling them in with students on examples. And then maybe near the end of the worksheet, it was like more practice problems. Whereas when you were, we were talking about worksheets, I think another style of worksheet, because I, I think the style you were, you were calling, I would have probably just called lesson pages, you know, like these are my <laughs> lesson pages. Really technical uh, term. My worksheet right? is actually going to come after the lesson pages, uh, which, uh, <laughs> which is really just a whole bunch of practice problems. And I think a lot of folks will, will recognize that, a, that that might be their definition of a worksheet mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. a page full of practice problems. Hey, we ought to get these done. And I think, I think that that is important to distinguish because I think we still have versions of those in our mm-hmm. lessons today is how do I use my lesson pages 
um, to support learning? Um, and how do I use my practice pages to support learning? What does that look like for us? Um, we want to talk about that here in this particular episode. Uh, so, uh, so Kyle, let's let's kind of roll back some of the time and think yeah. about uh, those first lesson pages or worksheets you were using to fill those things out. And then what happened? Like, how did you progress and yeah. realize that, hey, you know what? I can start to do this a little bit better. And why would I want to do that better? Yeah, for sure. And I, and I feel like this is a pretty natural like progression where, or, you know, call it a transformation where, you know, uh, when I first started teaching, I did like many other high school teachers were doing at the time. And I would like write a note on the board, right? Like that's how I remember math class. I had, I remember some of my high school math teachers, you know, some of them used an overhead, right? Mm -hmm. Many of them had like, you know, the note already done, right? And it was on like a transparency and they put it on and cover it. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like pull this down a little bit, (laughs) and then pull the piece of paper down, and then we copy it all and copy it all, and like that's that's Mm -hmm. how how we thought math class should run. Like that's how it did run for for us in school. And and again, by all means, if if some of you are listening and you're going like and and you see yourself in some of these examples, don't look at it as like uh, you're a bad person or not a great teacher or all these things. You're probably doing amazing things. The reason we did those things, and I know the reason I started doing this was because I wasn't having as much success as I would like when I was having students copy down a note. So naturally, what did I do? Well, I'm pretty decent with uh, you know Microsoft Word at the time. So I would like type up essentially this note and I would think long and hard about exactly what I could get in this note. And then I would like, John, you know what's coming next. I would like take some words out and maybe leave a little space for like, uh, mm, you know, uh, right. an example to go in. Mm-hmm. And then I would, I would print these things off and then I would give them to students and I would use that. Like John, you were calling it your lesson template. Right. It was like, or your, your, you know, your, your lesson notes or your lesson pages. And I would, I would print them off and give them to students. And then we would go through it together. Like, you know, it'd be like, I'm doing you a huge favor. Cause you don't have to write down all of these words. Right. We're just going to write down some of these words. And I'll be honest, it, it helped when I was teaching in that fashion, it was better to do it that way than to have students copy down this big note. Like that was, that was evident and obvious. Now, Kyle, I'm just going to jump in here. And I think, cause I think there's a perp like they're, they're like to, to capitalize or not capitalize, but uh, to, to kind of help the mindset of our teacher who say may still be using this style of worksheet in their classroom. Um, I think so a way to, to think why, like why we might still be doing that is it also might be like thinking about like, why, how did you view mathematics and math class at that time, Kyle? Like, like, what were you think like when you were thinking about math class, when you were teaching that way, what did you view the purpose of math class was? Yeah. Well, and it, it's interesting, John, because today I was in, in some classrooms and with one teacher in particular, an amazing teacher, by the way. So again, like we're, we're just trying to all move forward here mm-hmm. and, and progress. This particular teacher kind of like brought me back because, and, and it gave me the same feeling I had, which is like, we feel this pressure for students to have everything, like have the definitions, have the examples, have, you know, everything in their binder, right? It's like, they right. want to make sure they have this like possible. record of all the mathematics, right? Like all of the content is here. And this teacher was, you know, expressing this, this challenge to kind of break away from that. So like the goal for me was, I want to make sure that students get the math that they need to do well in my course. However, what I didn't realize at the time was that by doing this, uh, first of all, the lesson wasn't very engaging, right? I was I was just trying to be funny in other ways, unrelated to the mathematics. I was just trying to like entertain in between. Right. You were you were um, very probably uh, enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, like trying to be sarcastic and, and like and, dad funny and right, all that stuff, right? right? Like that was my shtick, and everyone has their thing. Um, but but then I also realized it was like by doing this process, I didn't actually have students intellectually engaged right? Mm-hmm. Like they, they were there and they were, they were behaviorally engaged. They did what I asked them to do. And in their mind, they were like, this is the game. And I was continuing to sort of like play that game that, Hey, if you do all this stuff and then you just do all the practice, I tell you, everything will be okay. And of course we know that 
that does work out okay for some students, right? Like there's a group of students that that will be just fine for. We call Mm -hmm. them the math people, right? And then for the students that it doesn't work so well for, we call them people that don't like math or are not great at math. But in reality, it's like, we're all capable of doing math, but how we, we then had, like, we realized that by doing that, we weren't actually helping them to think or to actually get better at problem solving mm-hmm, and at mm-hmm. actually understanding the content. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and when I was using a, those, those as well, this is where I was, I was thinking like you at that time, that math was like a get done subject. Mm-hmm. We've used that phrase here on the podcast before that, that it's like, we're going to present the material. We're going to copy it down. We're going to get that piece done and we're going to get through these sheets. That's the goal today. Let's get through these sheets and we'll move on. If you get through these sheets, awesome. You're done for today. Um, and that was a, a kind of a get done subject. And so so I think what 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 ha- was happening there uh, was us had a, a mindset around the way we thought math was. And now we've we've come to realize that we want more thinking happening on a, on a daily basis. We want to take the thinking off our hands and put them on the students and get, get their brains going every single day. And we've talked about flipping math classes. We've talked about changing our lesson structure. Um, and we now have, have viewed it in different ways. And Kyle, I think thinking back to your kind of your lesson, your worksheets that support some of the, the, the classroom activities. And I think when you started to venture into teaching through problem-based lessons, like I did, mm-hmm. we also used a, a type of worksheet or a lesson pages mm-hmm. to support that thinking. And I think we were, you know, you had just talked about the candle burning problem before we hit record here uh, as something you did today. And we were reflecting on how, uh, on how we were both used that particular problem with students and how we used a worksheet to help support the thinking students are, are doing while working through that problem. Do you want to give a run through of that particular problem? Um, yeah, and absolutely. What you, were, what you were using actually, the worksheet for? Yeah. And I'll actually bring it up for those who are watching on YouTube. Um, though you, you should see the screen now and you'll, you'll see the worksheet. Now, mind you, this wasn't like the first iteration, the first time that I sort of branched away from this like very very structured sort of like, you know, here's the definitions, here's the examples and, you know, fill in all these blanks and then, you know, go work on your problems. Um, We started shifting, John and I both um, pretty much around the same time, we started experimenting with like the Dan Meyer three act math style problem. And we started to slowly construct um, sort of like lesson, we called them like lesson templates. And the reason I call it a lesson template is because it was just that, like we would hand this thing out and this particular problem, uh, I I just did it today in a classroom. Uh, It's called candle burning. And it's all about, you know, you see this video of a candle just, you know, not slowly, I guess it's slowly burning, but it's giving you like sort of snapshots of it, you know, starting, you know, as a brand new candle. And then it's, you know, a bit's gone, more's gone, more's gone. And it goes all the Mm -hmm. way down to nothing. And, you know, you'll notice too on here, John, this, this is a worksheet that, uh, or a lesson template that I haven't really touched in probably five years. Uh, mm-hmm. We haven't revamped yeah. the candle burning task yet. So if you go to my, we- my old website, tapinateenminds.com, it's still up there. And it's like, it's very like, it's very like, um, I'm going to call it like kind of gimmicky in the way it's presented on that website, because it doesn't tell you exactly what to do. Like it doesn't tell you the exact intentionality. And even here, you'll notice this big yellow box on this template. It says, what's the question? Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this on the podcast before, John, where we've said like, we didn't understand how to get the best out of students when they watch the video. So now it's like, I told them, I was like, what's the question? I'm like, guess, like, guess yeah. what the what's question the is. Question so, here? so basically everyone's wrong who doesn't guess exactly the question that I'm thinking in my mind. And that was like such a shutdown experience. So that I, I digress. That was kind of a little off topic, but you can see that now our task would be more today. We did a notice and wonder back then I would hand them this sheet, John, mm-hmm, before mm-hmm. I played the video. And for those watching on YouTube, you see, it says, what's the question? There's an image of the candle 
burning. Uh, it says record your estimates. We use the too low, best guess, mm-hmm. too high strategy. And then there's a table and a big old grid there. Uh, so my wonder is how much thinking are the students going to be engaging in or how many students are like, oh, we're doing a table and a graph? Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you use this, and I think as I use this template the same way when I uh, was teaching this task a long time ago as well, it's it's I'm going to sh- show this video. I think I'm, oh, we're going to be so engaged. We're going to estimate. We're going to guess. We're going to write them down on this template sheet. And then I'm still going to show you how to use a, a scatter plot to answer the problem instead of having actually students think about how to answer that problem. So, so we we would have we would fill it out with them just like the lesson. But we were like, you know what? We're going to make it more engaging here by watching this candle burn. Which t- actually, you know what? Doesn't sound that engaging. Yeah, uh, to exactly. watch a candle burn. This is this. Don't people like? that up for punishment or something like that. Like it's like watching paint dry Kyle. Yeah. Um, but uh, we would fill this out and that we, we would call that, we would call that our lesson. And then we would, we would have some practice problems as well after that, but we've still evolved from there. Right. Kyle. Cause again, we're want thinking. So right now our worksheet has, has evolved a little bit into thinking uh, or into a space. Like it's almost like a, a place to record some of the learning we're doing. And we did a little bit of thinking by estimating and predicting early in this particular lesson. Um, Kyle, how did, how did it morph from, from there? Did like yeah. did the worksheet just disappear, like disappear? What's, what's, what happens after that? Now? Honestly, for a while. And, and this is where we talk about, you know, humans, the on off the one zero, like we're very right. digital um, creatures. Like, you know, we, we tend to, go all the way to one side or the other. So like for a while, I was like, I'm doing right. no Work, lesson template. Worksheets are bad all of a sudden. Worksheets right? are bad. So right. then it was like, I would I would not use that at all. But then what I found at the end of the lesson was like some students needed some support on like, what is important to get down? What, you know, and, and just to give them something to enhance the lesson. So, you know, the other thing I was thinking about here too is like the way I use the template, it was almost like I created it as if it was my script as the teacher or the mm-hmm. facilitator of the lesson. And mm-hmm. I don't know, even, even going all the way back to my old fill in the blank le- lessons, it was more or less like my, my script on like what I was going to talk about. You know, it was almost like, I, I want to make sure that I get everything out and I don't forget anything. So I'm going to put it all on this worksheet. And then of course, I'm not going to forget. So it's almost like a cue card for me. And now how this changed, like, so today when we did this lesson, Mm -hmm. I brought this exact worksheet because I didn't have any time to like modify it. So it said, what's the question, but I just noticed it says, what's the question now? Because this worksheet did not come out until way deeper in the lesson. Right. So you didn't like hand it out the beginning. So what, so let's, let's give our listeners a snapshot of what this lesson looked like for you now. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we began this lesson. First of all, you know, when when I go into a classroom I've never been in because this was a new class I had never been in, you know, introduce myself. I tell them why I'm going to ask them to notice and wonder in the video. We talk about like gaining attention and like your brain ignores so many things during the day cuz it can't, you know, it can't notice everything. So right now I'm going to ask you to intentionally notice as much as you can. And I find by giving that line, it really gives students the why. I'm asking them to do this process. And then I find that students are more willing to do it, even with this strange guy here, you know, doing a process Mm -hmm. they've never done. So we started with that notice and wonder, and they were just doing it on whiteboards. Uh, And then we shared, they shared it together, uh, turned and talked, and then we shared it out as a group. And I just made a big list on the board, on the old chalkboard, got that out there. Great. Mm -hmm. And then so this video plays and then I, one of the students actually did wonder like how long is it going to uh, burn out, but it doesn't matter if they did or not, because I'm going to say, I've got a challenge for you. Like right. the point of noticing and wondering is not to guess what I want to do next. It's like, I want to answer as many questions as I can. Some students said like, why was there, you know, why were we using a wrench to hold the candle? I got to explain that. I said like, I don't have a candlestick in my house. It was the best thing I could think of, you know? So we answer all those questions. We, we then get them to estimate. So like they turn and talk and the beauty, John, that and we do this a lot now for those who are in our webinars, we get them to start with, essentially, it's like, 
almost a random guess. Like basically they don't know much about this candle, but I right. say, I'm like, you know, reflect on what you know about candles. Like some of you, cause it was a very multicultural um, class of students, like some people might burn candles and it might be a part of a religious experience, right? right. At a certain holidays. Uh, for some people, they celebrate, they light candles on birthday cakes. Some people just light candles every single time they have a meal. It's just part of what you do. Right. I'm like, take all of that and try. When you look at this candle, you know, and I get, I know it's going to be random. Throw us a guess, throw us an estimate. What do you think? We get that going. And then we try to give them more information to hone in on that on, on that specific, you know, sort of more precise uh, value for how long will it take for the yeah. candle to burn out? And the beauty is, John, is that again we talk about this all the time about how we use these tasks as a way to diagnose and to formatively assess, but to, to really get a sense of like who has some strategies in their tool belt yeah, that they're totally. bringing with us. Right. Cause like, I don't know about you. Yeah. I know you run the lesson very similarly now. Yes. What are you seeing students right. do, even though they don't have a template to work with? Like what, yeah. what are they doing in your class? So, so I've started exactly the same way as you not, and I've withheld any worksheet or, or accompaniment sheet for this task. They are completely uh, at their whiteboards, um, which some of them have grids, some of them don't, some of them are white. Um, uh, I've also done it at, at the desk. Uh, standing at the whiteboards always seems the best. Peter Lillall has explained that to us, that kids will think better, faster, um, and get their ideas down faster at uh, the whiteboards while standing. So so they're up there. And, and some of the information that we provide next, right, Kyle, in the lesson is some of the data, right? So you'll see mm -hmm. like, oh, after so many minutes, it's now this height. And after so many minutes, it's now this height. So we get a little bit of data out there. And we also should bring up, Kyle, that it's, the intentionality of this lesson is extremely important on what happens next, right? Because I was using this le lesson to introduce the idea of using a, a scatter plot and a line of best fit to help make predictions, uh, to extrapolate. Um, and we had not really talked about, say, using a line of best fit before all of this. We, we had made some scatter plots before, but with many of our lessons, we come into a problem like this that may be different than the problem previously, right? So it, we, we want to keep our kids guessing and problem solving. So we, we don't always, I don't always go, okay, yesterday we were doing a scatter plot, guys. Make mm -hmm. sure you use a scatter plot to solve this right, problem. Right. Like that's not being said at all because I, like you, I want to see what comes out of the thinking here because seeing their thinking can help us uh, shape the discussion around mm -hmm. our learning goal, which is, hey, can we use uh, a scatter plot or line of best fit to help make predictions? And why would we want to do that, right? Like, why yeah, does that yeah. help here? And so when I, we give the data only, kids will record that in a table or a list. Um, and then what happens is kids will start to make conclusions and going, look, I've got to figure out when is this thing going to burn out? And so uh, what I've seen Kyle kids do is, is so some kids will look at the change, right? They'll look at the change and they'll go, okay, it's dropping by this, it's dropping by this, it's dropping by this. And they will start to kind of continue that pattern. Well, they'll, let me just keep making a table essentially is what they're doing. And it might not even take the form of a table. Um, and they'll just keep writing that table until all of a sudden the height is zero. So they're keeping, keeping that going. Um, and so, which is one type of solution. Um, another type of solution I'll see is the kids will look at those changes that's changing and they'll average them. So they'll go, yeah, look, let me look at the average change. And then they'll keep the average change going. And I've actually had some students in this problem find that average change and make a linear equation out of that and then solve a linear equation, which, which sometimes we don't anticipate bec because... We're thinking we're in scatter plot land, but all of a sudden you'll see students formulate a, a linear equation to solve this. And you're like, okay, I'm going to, like, that's so important to use. Like, think about the learning you just learned about that kid and what they know and don't know about, say, linear relations and scatter plots. Because eventually we are going to draw a line of best fit. And they have created an equation pretty much for a line of best fit. Um, you will also see kids kind of just looking at uh, uh, some of the numbers and averaging all the numbers and thinking about, well, okay, well, that's, that's another one. Or kids will say, well, it got to, got to this height after this many minutes. And let me just double that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let me just double that. 
and which is which is some really great thinking as well because now we're we're there we get to discuss like if i double that what am i assuming is true yeah and i and, love it like we're taking all of this in and so i'm taking all of this in and learning things about my students and the strategies and so Will anyone or will I have I had lessons where we did this where anyone created a scatter plot? No, like there's been less full lessons of no one will create a scatter plot to solve this problem. And that's fine because we're good. What we're going to do is we're going to take all your answers from all your different types of strategies. And then my, my learning goal is still to talk about scatter plots and lines of best fit. So this mm -hmm. is the moment where it's like, okay, these are great answers, like these are great estimates or narrowed down predictions based off your reasoning and thinking. Uh, now, sometimes my famous line, Kyle, is to go, you know what, can I, um, these are all great. Let's, I wanna show you one more strategy that I saw another student in this grade do. Mm. And like, like, can I show you that strategy? And you can compare your strategy. So it's strategy. still not like your it's idea. It's sort right. of like, it's right. like you're capable of this too, or, right. uh, or you know, you're celebrating students not like I know where we should go next. You got right? it. You got it. So then it's like, okay, let they they had made a grid. You know, they'd use a grid and they made a scatter plot. I got a grid here. And this is kind of like where a modified version of your template that you showed there. And again, if you if you're seeing on YouTube, you saw that. You can also go to the show notes links and, and you can get to the uh the the uh, burning a candle burning task on Kyle's website uh, from the links in the show notes page. Um, but that's where the, all of a sudden the scatter plot can come in. And then now this is a little bit of our consolidation stage of mm -hmm. our lesson. I want to get the learning goal out. And so we're using this worksheet, a uh, piece of paper with a scatter plot on it and a table for us to copy the table, make the scatter plot. And we can start to see the pattern. And the beautiful part about that is we get to use kids reasoning and strategies from around the room. Like think about the student who used a table to continue the table. Like you can now visualize that table change, you know, on a graph. Like if we continue this table, you can see the points from almost plot to plot um, as we continue down in the scatter plot. Um, think of the student who averaged all of the changes. Really, what are they doing? They're, they're finding the average change. They're finding really the slope of the uh, line of best fit. Um, and we can use that in our discussion when we talk about, hey, let's see where this trend goes. Um, think of the student who created the equation of that line and used an equation to predict when it would end or get to zero. Like they can see that equation happening when you're showing the scatter plot. So we're making significant connections to their thinking and strategy to the learning goal of the day. And what we're doing, Kyle, is since we're talking today specifically it's about scatter plots, or oh, sorry, sorry, we're talking. Well, that, I mean, about, it sounds like we are, we are talking a lot about scatter plots. We too, have so. been, you're right, but we're specifically yeah. talking today in this episode about worksheets. Um, we are using this sheet, right, to, to, to support the to learning enhance, goal support and enhance. You know? Yeah, enhance. It's this. like not the point, like the worksheet's not the point of the lesson, exactly. you know, whereas like the, the old school me was like, we got to get this worksheet done. And now it's like, no, no, we've got to get this learning experience done. And we're going to use this tool, this worksheet mm -hmm. to enhance that experience. And I, I love, John, how you described the different solution strategies that you've seen. And of course, in all of our more recently updated or created units of, uh, you know, on the math moments site, people will notice that's something we have in there is like mapped out mm -hmm. student approaches are mapped out. Now it doesn't mean every time you're going to see that because John, nobody today in this class, no one had averaged out uh, the changes okay. in the table, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen next time. And it doesn't mean that these students aren't even, aren't capable of that. Right. It's just, that's right. not the the choice that they made, but something I noticed with this group that was really cool. And, and I think it's worth mentioning when they do these solutions, all these solutions before we share them, one thing that I have done more recently that I think is so awesome. is we update that original estimate and like the original estimate was like super wide, right? Super mm -hmm, wide. Mm -hmm, yep. Then with these new strategies, they get tighter. And then 
you let the, you you go and do the five practice. You you show the different student solutions and you essentially consolidate them, and then you let them update again. And you mm-hmm. see kids start to notice. Well, with that strategy, it becomes really obvious on when it may or may not burn out. Mm-hmm. And this one is like more of like an approximation. So, for example, that student who today in in this class said. Nine and a half centimeters is like a little more than half of 17, which was the original height. So he's like, since it's like half, I'm going to double. So it was like a doubling and having strategy. Mm-hmm. It was like, I'm going to mm-hmm. double the time. So they said a hundred, uh, they said 312 minutes. What an awesome strategy. But when somebody else shares a different strategy or when they do the scatter plot, And today kids did the scatter plot. We didn't tell them what a line of best fit was. Kids just used their pencil and just sort of went and followed it down. Uh, The student who doubled the time because the candle was half the size, that student went, oh, I'd like to update my estimate. Hmm. And they brought it closer because they saw that this scatter plot was actually like more obvious and actually more precise you could see that averaging that you were talking about, right? Right. So there's like a huge, huge, like epiphany that students can have in terms of, it doesn't make your strategy bad. Like yours was a great, quick, clever strategy. It's just a little less precise than taking the time to do a scatter plot and like kind of analyzing it more to scale uh, in that particular case. So that is, that is essentially like the way we are defining what a lesson worksheet, like a worksheet that's going to support the lesson yep. would look like. John, what about this other type yeah. that you were referencing? Like, what about like, why, why would we use one? Are they bad? You know, like, are, are, is it bad to use that type that you're talking about? The, um, tell us a little more yeah, about the that. Ty- so the type of, of worksheet, I think a very common uh, understanding of, of a worksheet is now like after my lesson or after my notes is I now have a set of, set of practice problems uh, and they are on a sheet, right? So that's kind of like a, our worksheet definitions. The way I always thought a worksheet was, is like, let's hand out a worksheet today and we're going to do get these to practice work. problems, right? And so... And so I think my my morphing uh, 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 of what should be on a worksheet these days to saying, let me just have a bunch of practice problems has changed over time. And I think, and I think if my, this, this goes back to Kyle, I think the purpose of our lesson, right? Like what, what are we hoping to achieve? What is my learning goal of the day? It always should be the first thing we think about. Um, if today is a day where I I'm like, today, I'm going to hand out this worksheet. Like, what is the purpose of that worksheet? Is it, is it to strengthen a learning goal or a combination of learning goals? And if so, if, if today is a purposeful practice day, or, or maybe I did the candle burning activity, we consolidated, we did a line of best fit, we did a scatter plot, and now I need some practice problems to strengthen that up. Now I might use a worksheet, which, which we we create, right, Kyle? Like we still create mm-hmm. worksheets to accompany all of the problem-based tasks on our website. And I still use worksheets on a regular basis with my students because we have now connected. We've, we've got our students thinking about the concepts first, uh, and now we want some practice, purposeful practice problems. And so um, I think I think the way I craft a worksheet now is different than just going, let me just grab any old worksheet and throw it at them. Um, I've got a couple of pointers of lo- the way I think about my worksheets now, like things that I want. I, I, I still want the worksheet to drive learning. I still want them to think instead of just regurgitate and get done as fast as you can. And so mm-hmm. I, think, uh, I think a lot... Uh, a lot of our worksheets, uh, if you're looking at some of them, they're not like overloaded with questions. Um, so that's like one tip, Kyle, is that these worksheets that are accompanying our tasks now or purposeful practices is we're asking more pointed questions. Uh, we're yeah. not asking like a bunch of the same type of calculation. There still is maybe in context. So in this particular example, we've been working through it might be still related to a candle for a little bit. It might be a different candle with a different height. Um, it maybe dirt burns at a different rate. And we might want to ask a couple questions, maybe even some comparison questions to the one we already did. Um, so I, I tend to build my worksheets so that they extend that context that we already worked in, and then maybe slowly introduce a couple new contexts. But it's still context-driven for me um, related to the to that problem or 
other problems that involve the same learning goal. I tend to not have a ton of questions that are just, we call them naked problems. Um, and if I do, they might be later in the worksheet because I like to use context and then work towards naked. Whereas, you know, when I first started teaching, it was reverse, right? You would do naked. Yeah. And I want to complicate it, right? Problem. That, that um, the thinking is like, I don't want to complicate things. Like, I don't want it to be too much for them to handle when in re- like, mm-hmm. it's almost the opposite because they have like nothing to like really, when we talk about making it relatable, I, th- I think, you know, the research about ha- making things relatable in math class gets misinterpreted. We're talking about like the relatable is like, how does it apply to what I know? You know, it's not what I like. It's like, what do I know? So context can be really helpful with that. And that's so key. And I really like how you had mentioned too, like if we're going to have like a practice worksheet, like a purposeful practice is what we like to call it, worksheet crafted after this experience, what a great opportunity to go, hey, listen, uh, there's this other candle from this other store that's this tall and it burns at a rate of about whatever, you right. know, what, when will this one burn at, or when will it get to this height? Right. Or, you know, well, you can extend it ex- to equations. It depends on where you want to go with it, but you want to make it as explicit and as intentional as you possibly can. Right. right. It's an, it's intentional, but Kyle, the way you phrased this problem is actually like an open problem, right? Kind of open type question where it mm-hmm. allows some flexibility in how kids can show their learning. And that's actually something I try to craft questions for my worksheets on. It's like, I want open questions as much as I can on those. So it can allow kids to kind of go depth, like in depth or surface, depending on their, on where they are. And then that also, when you're looking at them solving these problems on the worksheet, because that's right, right. Why are we giving kids problems? If we're not going to look at what they're doing, Mm -hmm. it's not just a time filler. Um, no, totally. it is, is I want to see how they're answering these types of problems. Like where are their heads at? Like they're, it's almost like this exit ticket idea, right? Where, so that might be like, here's a new candle. It burns faster than the one before. What does its well, graph look like? I love it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or, or it's taller. Uh, how is the graph different, right? Like you're asking questions that keep them thinking about what we're trying to get out of the relationship. And also the con- the context, but also the learning goal of the day. And so creating and crafting open questions um, allows for different strategies and different representations. Also really nice there. Um, one, other, one other tip here on these types of worksheets, Kyle, that, uh, that I, I'm, I'm loving is, is a, a little bit of choice. And I'm going to, I'm going to call our friend out, Aleda Klassen, who, uh, recently has been sharing all of her stuff on her board's website uh, for the new grade nine class. And she's had a lot of choice in some of the work that she's uh, giving her students. And she's, she's labeled it. I think we've used this on the podcast before. I might've um, she's labeled her choice levels, like spicy. It's like, mm. how spicy do you want your math question to be? So it's like, I got a little spice, some medium spice, some hot spice. So we get to choose how much spicy we want. Uh, And we can progress through the spice level, like build your spice tolerance up for this learning goal. So, so I'm, I've been uh, enjoying seeing some of those examples uh, over there at uh, Aleda's uh, web uh, website and using her resource or looking at her resources. So uh, having the choice is really, is really nice for worksheets too. Awesome. We'll make sure to put in the link. Uh, we've yeah. got a page with all kinds of uh, the new grade nine D stream course here in Ontario. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll put that in the show notes and and that that link does have a link to Aleda and, and her board's work. So awesome over there and all the others who are working on that work. Uh, friends, so I think the verdict is mm-hmm. in. Uh, the math moment makers out there, do not fear. Worksheets are not bad. It is mm-hmm. what you're doing with them. I even had, John, I, I forgot to tell you this. I had a teacher come up to me today and, and sort of, again, like gave that, you know, like, oh, I, I, I got this. I got this from teachers pay teachers. And like, yeah. you know, it was like an embarrassment. And I'm like, if it's a good activity, like, and that's the intent is there, or maybe you modified it or whatever. Awesome. Like it was almost like they were expecting me to be like sad or disappointed when in reality, it's like, no, you go, go and get the things that you need. And as long as it meets the intent, that is key. So our big takeaway for you friends, the math moment maker community from all over the world is that worksheets can be extremely helpful 
if we are intentional with them, both if it's something to enhance our lesson. So for those who are kind of in the during my lesson worksheet mode right now, and they're thinking about that, does your lesson worksheet or template or whatever you want to call it, does it take away the thinking from students? Does it take away maybe the curiosity? Like and and the other thing too, John, that we had mentioned before that I think is worth mentioning is like, you know, what would I do instead if I if I had like tomorrow's template is ready and it's yeah. very just guided and kids are just filling in the blank, and we would say hold off on it. What's the question you're going to ask students? Maybe it's the first example. Maybe you have to like maybe just you know restructure that question a little bit and or maybe go all the way back to our episode uh on the real flipped classroom on how we can just give students mm-hmm. something to chew on first like we described here in the candle burning task so think about what your worksheet is and could we make it into something that enhances instead of making it something that's there to just get done right like is it just the note that is to be copied or a shorter form version of the note that you would have had students to copy? Or is it something that actually enhances the learning experience in your class where it's student-centered, it's problem-based, it it promotes thinking and curiosity? So reflect on those things and think about what, where your worksheets sort of lie and how you might be able to think a little more intentionally as you move forward. And uh, we all try to do better in the math classroom together. Totally, totally. Thanks, Kyle, for summarizing some of those uh, tips that we shared here in this episode. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing your ideas uh, on uh, worksheets, like how are you using them? You can always reach out to us. Uh, we got a few places uh, that you can reach out to us. One being probably go right to uh, the Facebook group. If you are on Facebook, head on over to that, that group. Uh, if you're not in that group yet, You can join that group, no problem. Uh, Just search Math Moment Makers K to 12. um, And you can post a question in there about worksheets. You're like, hey, guys, I was just listening to the worksheet episode. And I got I got to push back a little bit. And here's my question. Like, we'd love it. We would love it. So uh, get on over to uh, Math Moment Makers K to 12. Or if you're on Twitter, you can tweet us at Make Math Moments or on Instagram. Uh, we're over there. You can follow us over there as well. Um, think about think about some of the big ideas we talked about here. Think about, I'm sure as we were discussing worksheets, you were thinking about what your worksheets look like because we all use them. Uh, and Kyle's good suggestions are uh, to think about how, how are we using them? Mm-hmm. That is the most important question I think we could be asking right now. So reach out to us. We're on lots of places and uh, <laughs> hey, and uh, you can you can find out all of the links from this episode uh, on uh, on the on the show notes page, which is on makemathmoments.com forward slash episode one seven nine. That's makemathmoments.com forward slash episode one seven nine. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet on whatever platform you're on, make sure you do. And if you're not on YouTube right now watching this to kind of see, I had the, you know, the candle burning in the background. I showed some of the graphs, some of the things as John was talking a little earlier, all of those things are on YouTube and also other examples, like actual examples of us going through different tasks and different lessons keep in mind, like these are things, these are tools that we're using to introduce ideas. We are not using them as a lesson summary or a unit summary at the end of a unit. This is to introduce students, to introduce them to these ideas, to show them that their big, bad brains can solve problems without me telling them how to solve them. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to take what they've done and I'm going to try to help them see at least something new, right? We're going to try to push their thinking a little bit further, not because it's better than what they've done, but just because it's another opportunity. It's something new for them to do. Well, until next time, my friends, I'm Kyle Pierce. And I'm John Orr. High fives for us. Hey, and high five for you. Ciao, ciao.